Hey everyone, so in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you all a bunch of new uh, affordable makeup releases. So I tried out a bunch of makeup today, um, releases that have just caught my attention. I have just been incredibly excited by the recent drugstore launches. We have some like lip stain liners, um, a lot of different affordable uh, base products, really nice uh, cream bronzer. There's just a lot to talk about in today's video. I don't remember the last time I went into one of these videos where I tried out a bunch of new affordable makeup and had such incredible luck. There is just, there are a lot of super promising releases in this video. So thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy it. And by the way, my name's Amanda. I love talking about affordable makeup on my channel, but the thing is, is that I never recommend makeup specifically because it's affordable. I recommend good formulas across the board. So the formula within itself needs to impress me no matter what the price point is. I'll never tell you to buy something just because it's affordable because if the formula doesn't stack up, I think that's actually kind of wasting your money. So if you align with that, if that makes sense to you, I would love to have you back. Definitely make sure to subscribe and let's just go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I know that we're doing more affordable makeup in this video, but here's the thing. I have been under the weather for about a week. I'm just now starting to get better which basically means my skin is just, it's a little bit tired. Obviously, like your body puts in all of its resources into like your body when it's trying to get better. It's not worrying about your skin as much. So I think that shows, I think it shows. This is a very long winded way of explaining why I am trying out a product that is not affordable and the very beginning of this video. But here's the thing, the new Ilia, the base face milk looks very promising. These kind of glazing milks or, or these kind of like skin prep mixed with skincare kind of products have really been intriguing me lately. And this one in particular, um, I really like that it is described as this kind of milky texture. Uh, it looks to be, oh my goodness, whoa. I had an expectation of how this was going to feel on the skin, like, you know, comforting and these kind of glazing milks a la road or even like this, the great skin from Merit has a really lovely texture. This is supremely bouncy oh my god it is absorbing really well but it has this really lovely spreadability but just this beautiful bounce too i like when i put that on my skin for the first time it is incredibly softening even if it does not look it this is the best my skin has felt in a week. What is in this? Honestly, I don't think I've had such an insane first impression of a product in a while. This is crazy. Okay, I cannot wait to try this again. Absolutely incredible. My skin actually just got so much relief from that. The reason I wanted to also go into that base product is I really wanted the foundation that I'm trying today to really have its best uh, shot. Uh, so I have two that I could potentially try. I already decided, honestly, before I did this video, which one I was going to try though. Just gotta be transparent here. So we have the new CoverGirl. Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence, which is essentially, it's supposed to be a dupe, I think, for the Chanel Waterfresh Tint, which is a product that I've used for years and have very much loved. So there's this, um, and I have used this actually a couple of times before, but there's also the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating CC Cream, which is essentially their hydrating version of the CC that they came out with not too long ago. Here's the thing. 
Today I'm going to use the one from e.l.f. The reason being, uh, I will give you a quick little spiel and review of this. Not uncommon either to the Chanel Waterfresh tint. When you are dealing with any like significant textural issues, so for example, like peeling or just general dryness, which I very much am. I've gone through like, I don't know, five boxes of tissues in a week. This is beautiful and incredibly skin-like, but it does not uh, blur texture in that way. And really, a lot of foundation and base products, we can't expect them to be miracle workers, you know what I mean? But with a product like this, because it is so thin, very, very little pigment, what kind of happens with this is it clings on to incredibly dry skin. Whereas I think other products that have more emollients rather than just hydration um, were able to at least add a little bit of moisture there and emollients to kind of, I want to say kind of smooth out the area a little bit. This just, uh, this just doesn't have a texture that is going to be able to do that. So I do think that there is huge potential in this product and I definitely see a lot of similarities between this and the Chanel Water Fresh Tint. So if you'd like me to go into those, if you do want to see a follow-up review of this, please definitely let me know. I mean, I bought it because I thought you guys would be interested, but I think today we're going to go in with the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating CC Cream. Now, all of that being said, I've not had great luck with e.l.f. base products in the past, um, but I'm really holding out a lot of hope for this one. So I have the shade 120 Neutral. It's about two pumps, but I didn't really do a full pump of either. So maybe this is like a pump of product, let's say. And shade match is decent. I would say it's a little, a touch light actually. Um, but honestly, I haven't left my house in a week. So looking a little bit pale anyway. Not like much of a smell, maybe like a little sunscreeny, but all, honestly, I also can't smell much either <laughs> right now. I don't know if I already said this. I tried to film this video yesterday and I had so many like coughing fits that I literally just stopped. I don't know, maybe five minutes into the video and I was like, it's, it's not going to happen today. So this is what it's looking like on this half of my face. There it is. I... I think it looks really good. It really isn't overly exaggerating any of the texture that I have going like on my upper lip. I don't know, I think the shade match is actually pretty good. Zoom you in a little bit closer, but that's what it's looking like. Really, really pretty glow. It is concealing redness pretty seamlessly. Well, wow, I mean, really not half bad at all. I gotta tell you, I'm incredibly, incredibly surprised in a very good way. Like, my skin looks great. I don't necessarily even really have any complaints. I mean, the only thing I would say is it could be a touch more blurring, I think. Like, I could maybe go for like, I don't know, a couple point, a couple more points of blurring. But overall, for the way my skin feels right now, this is looking good. And I also have to be honest, I don't think it is a coincidence that I use this as a prep product because this texture is kind of surreal, like insane. And also, this gives really beautiful medium coverage like that. This definitely smells like sunscreen. So if you don't like that, it's just something to keep in mind. But I honestly am pretty happy with this base. Uh, feeling really good. I was really hoping for a good base day, especially considering, you know, a good base will help all of the rest of the affordable products that I have here to do well. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, I have a concealer, a new concealer to try. That is not going to go well with this shade match. 
All right, I guess that's why I decided to throw it across the room. Okay, so the new True Match Serum Concealer from L'Oreal. I picked up the shade C2 Light Pale. I don't know about this shade, really. I do know that it is giving me trouble getting open. Uh, there is hyaluronic acid in here, 1.5% uh, as well as caffeine. Hyaluronic acid I could do without in um, a serum concealer formula, but the caffeine I thought was promising. Now, interesting uh, paddle applicator. It's kind of like a triangle, but look, it kind of like gets right in that corner. Stamps really well in there actually. And this is, these are like my trouble spots right in here. We'll see how this goes. I always try and try new concealers for you all, but also kind of uh, monitoring my expectations because I almost never like them. I am gonna fill in my brows while I'm letting this concealer uh, dry down a little bit. I'm gonna do my brows. I'm not gonna set them because they actually do have a new kind of lamination gel. Uh, from CoverGirl, I think. Yeah, it's from CoverGirl. It's the Brow Enhancer Gel Wax that I thought we could try together. Okay, let's blend out some concealer. Honestly, I think it looks fine, but, you know, it's not really doing much for the hollowness under my eyes. Is even worse than usual because I've just been sick. So let's see if I can build it up. All things considered, I actually don't think that that looks half bad. It's one of those concealers that's incredibly thin, but it's not like a really thin, but paint-like. Uh, that kind of dries down really fast and kind of crumbles and or kind of creates that really airtight finish on the skin. I think a lot of typical serum concealers for a really long time had that kind of finish. This is not like that. It definitely is a little bit more emollient in the sense of, or it's more reflective for sure and doesn't feel super drying. Uh, I don't think it looks bad, but uh, coverage wise, I don't think you're going to get a ton more than what I have right now because I'm finding as I build it, it's not like necessarily getting, you know, there's not like a ton more coverage happening here, but I, I think it's good. But again, I wouldn't immediately reach for it. I, I kind of always know immediately if a concealer is going to be like a holy grail for me. Next we have the Cheek Kiss uh, Cream Bronzer from Milani, which I am so, so excited about. I have it in the shade Hey Honey. Uh, I just, I love the cream cheek uh, blushes so much that when I saw they were releasing the bronzer, I was like, sign me up. I need to try this out for everyone. So just pressing that in with my BK106 brush, just talked about this brush. It is a beautiful multifunctional brush, like great for foundation, as well as bronzer, as well as blush, like it really can do it all. And just pressing that in, good color. Really like this color. Uh, just blending really nicely. It definitely has a decent amount of pigment as well, which I personally found the Cheek Kiss line in general to have uh, like a good amount of pigment, at least with the uh, cream blushes and the compact. I think the liquid ones were a touch more, a touch less pigment than the other one, but yeah, I, I feel good about this. Also, this is kind of like warming up my face and I think my face needed a little bit of warmth. I don't know, I, I just haven't seen my face with any color in a while, so this is kind of hitting the spot for me. I think it looks really pretty. I'm I'm honestly surprised. Not because this is affordable makeup. Just because of the condition and the state of my skin right now, the fact that this looks the way that it does, I am just kind of floored, honestly. If this lasts really well, I think that this could be like money. 
uh, I'm very, very happy with it right now. And honestly, as I continue to look at the concealer, does it help with hollowness? No, but it actually looks very hydrating. Uh, and again, my just because of the condition of my skin right now, I think that that uh, speaks volumes. So right, I don't know guys, I, I am feeling like, when I saw all of the new affordable makeup, I was incredibly excited because a lot of the launches looked good to me, but the fact that I'm actually putting them on my face right now and they're performing, that makes me like triple excited. So, okay. Right now, feeling like I'm at a high point, hopefully that, that doesn't mean that like something bad is gonna happen. I think really quick, I am gonna set my brows with the CoverGirl Gel Wax. Uh, the Clean Fresh Brow Gel Wax and see what we can do with these brows. My brows have kind of been like acting kind of weird lately. So let's see if this can uh, help me out. Small brush. Why are you focusing? Anyway, it's very small. There's actually quite a lot on the brush. So I'm going to take off a little bit. It's very, okay, it's very wet. Okay, what's happening? <laughs> oh my God. I don't <laughs> remember how I said it was like, hopefully nothing, that doesn't mean something bad is about to happen. I don't know if I'm liking that brow very much. Do you guys see how this is like taking my brow hairs straight up? I have very long eyebrow hairs. I don't even think I realized how long. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I realized how long they even are right now until I used this. I can see if you have shorter brow hairs, this really coming in handy. But I will say that I don't think I've ever been more confused the way my brows look. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I really can't laugh right now because I can... Cr like I'm crying really easily right now. Okay, yeah, it's it has so started to set. Uh, we are just going to finesse this. You know what's so interesting about this is it really does feel like a gel and a wax at the same time. Like it's wet like a gel, but it is surprisingly still movable like a wax. And it's not crunching up as I continue to mess with it, which I think is, honestly, I'm very surprised. I don't, I'm, I'm not obsessed with the way that it looks, but it doesn't look awful either. So I'm going to call that a win, honestly, just like from where I was like a few minutes ago. I'm, I'm going to call that a win. Shall we try some blush? So I actually picked up the uh, Winky Lux Cheeky Roses. Um, I have a sculpt version, like a bronzer contour kind of situation. And then I also have a blush. So we're gonna try out the blush. I know that Winky Lux is not like super, super affordable, but I thought that you guys still might wanna see this. You wanna see this? I think Winky Lux is such an underrated brand and some of the formulas are really special. So this is a liquid blush. I got mine in the shade Noble. There it is. Pretty little rose at the top. And you kind of just add it right on to the cheeks. So I'm going to start with a very small amount. Interesting. This is, I think, more fluid than I was expecting. You see how, or actually, I guess you guys can't see. It almost looks like it's a little bit watery more watery like this might be yeah this is kind of one of those uh shake the product up and then it gets on here kind of situation so not like full-on creamy pigment the way like the elf ones are so i need to blend this out really fast because i don't know what the texture is like and this is the shade noble uh that blended very beautifully super spreadable 
You know, the texture almost reminds me of the Daniel Sandler watercolor blushes. That is a throwback product. If you have been using liquid blushes for a long time, then you might know that one because that was one of the only liquid blushes on the market for a really long time, it felt like. That looks so beautiful. I'm gonna take a little bit into the crease as well. That looks so pretty. Very fresh. It, again, it blended like like a very, very seamless kind of watercolor blush might. Very, very promising. I am now equally, or even more interested in this uh, Cheeky Rose liquid sculpt now. Um, I got the shade Almafi. Maybe I'll give you guys a swatch, but oh my goodness. That looks very, very nice. There's the shade Almafi. Oh, that looks like a good shade too. And yeah, it kind of, it immediately, it's incredibly thin on the skin, but not like obnoxiously thin in a way that doesn't want to work with the skin or blend with other products. Because, you know, the e.l.f. Camo, the hydrating CC cream, it's a... I don't know, it's the texture of a typical CC cream. It's got creaminess, you know what I mean? And sometimes when you have a very thin texture on top of something very creamy, you can kind of see the two textures not working together. Um, that's not what's happening. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm very excited about that. I have, I don't know, I have a good feeling about it. I have so many new eye products to try out uh, and these are not like really affordable. So I could potentially skip showing you guys these products, or I could just use one anyway. I can't decide what I wanna do. I got a bunch of products from Raban from uh, Ulta. Like I have this really, really beautiful palette that I just, oh, I really feel like I wanna try. Would you guys be mad at me if I tried it? Would you be mad at me? This is the handbag palette in Unnatural World. And I am going to go ahead and these textures are really beautiful. They're, they're incredibly silky. They almost feel like a touch wet when you first put your finger into them, but they're not like putties necessarily. They just have an incredible softness to them. Very, very interesting. So I think I am going to go ahead into this really pretty, kind of like khaki brown. It's got a really pretty uh, yellowy note to it. Whoa, that is a lot of pigment. Way more pigment than I was expecting. Okay. Hello. Let's see how it blends though. This color is absolutely fantastic. I really could not be happier with that color. It's super pretty and very, very flattering on green eyes. If you have green eyes, I already have a feeling that this palette is going to make them pop. Because again, we're dealing with like, these kind of like mustardy tones, I just always find make my green eyes look really pretty and then we have a purple, which purple and green are always a good combo for um, for just really making them pop. All right, so we have that down, uh, like all over in the crease. Again, I really, really like that. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead with this cooler tone brown down here on the outer corner. Just to kind of add a little bit more definition there. I wish I had more brushes down here. I'm like trying to do everything with this one brush right now and I don't know how successful I'm being. By the way, this is the BK206. Pretty big brush. Not exactly great for detail work, but we're making it work. God, that's a pretty color too. That is a good color. Interestingly enough, this is a cream. It's the only cream within the palette. And it's this like really, really beautiful 
almost like a robin egg blue but there's like a little something else going on there like there's a little bit more purple than just blue almost like a periwinkle um so i'm just gonna go ahead and apply it i don't know if they consider this a gloss or a cream oh they do they consider it a gloss yeah i was gonna say the it goes pretty translucent pretty fast for it to be like a cream eyeshadow, but that's an interesting, you know, I don't see a lot of brands doing a colored gloss within their palettes, so that's kind of cool. Um, I will say the matte formula feels very luxe um, within this palette, but okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the sparkly top coat, um, and I don't think I'm gonna use the gloss today, just because like, really, the first time I put on makeup in like a week, I'm gonna put an eye gloss on, I don't think so. <laughs> Honestly, I just think I want to give my eyes a little bit of relief. You know what I mean? So let's apply. Oh, you know what? That is just really pretty. This feels very luxury to me. And I don't know a lot about this brand. Admittedly, you guys, I'm not like a, a fashion guru. I'm not in that world. So that is a blind spot for me. Like, I don't know a ton about this brand, but I will tell you, I know luxury beauty and that is luxury. That looks so pretty. The color story is gorgeous. What a beautiful everyday palette. I'm honestly, I'm like, am I being punked right now? Like every single thing I've tried, I've liked. I am very, very excited now to try out the other eyeshadows. Like I have a bunch of liquid shadows to try out from this brand. I think I have another, I have a couple of like smaller palettes too, but this is the palette Unnatural World. And that is really, really pretty. I think I am going to go ahead and line my eyes with this Infallible Grip Mechanical Liner. A state of Kate recently said that this is like not going to come off on your waterline, like it, or if you tight line. Um, so I said, all right, I will definitely try that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tight line with this today and see uh, how it works out for me. This is just the black. I know the black is gonna look a little bit stark with this look. So maybe I'll just use it on this outer corner. Tight line really makes a ton of difference. I am seeing a little bit of transfer to the lower lash line, but that, that's gonna happen right when you apply it because this hasn't set quite yet. So that's not alarming to me at all. That is the tight line on, better than I even expected. Um, I thought it might be too stark. Okay, we'll see how that lasts. I'm very excited about that. I think I am going to Go ahead and use, I, I think I need a little bit of a wing kind of situation. I just feel like that's what this look is missing. I'm gonna see if I could potentially do it with this shade over here in the unnatural palette. Not positive if that's gonna be the case, but yeah, I just don't think there's enough contrast there because I already used that pretty heavily on the outer corner. So I think what I'm gonna do now is find like a darker brown eyeshadow. We got some Natasha Genona. Um, I'm gonna use the shade Silhouette in this palette. Yeah, I like that. I think that that kind of pulled everything together a little bit. Uh, okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and do mascara and then we have a ton of lip products to try. I feel like, I don't know, with the, the eyes, I almost feel like I've seen this color story and like something Guerlain has come out with. It's very, very pretty. I am, I also really like the way that the base looks and I'm just gonna keep going because I don't know, I just am some reason like, for some reason I'm really suspicious. You know, you do a full face of new makeup uh, that you haven't tried before and like something usually goes wrong and like nothing's like really kind of going wrong and I don't know, maybe I have trust issues, but like, I don't know. So I have a few new lip products to potentially try. I have the new NYX uh, Slick Click Fat Lip Oils in the stick. Um, and then I also have the Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stain. 
from Milani. Love a good lip stain. And then I also have the CoverGirl Outlast Stylo like lip stain pencil thing. And I think I'm gonna start off with this. Uh, I have, you know, it's kind of just like this kind of colored stain marker situation. I, you guys, these have existed for so long. Like I remember having these in like high school, but this is the shade uh, Shuggy Girl. And I'm gonna use this to kind of line the lips. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead with one of the NYX uh, fat lip oils. I uh, haven't decided which one yet. My lips are like not doing amazing right now, so we'll see how this looks. This is kind of deceptive. It actually has way more of a point than I was expecting. Like, there's a point there, and I don't know. For the life of me, I can't see the point, but I'm getting precision. Uh, I love that. The color, I think it applied really beautifully. Um, I would, I would say that like a product like this, I can anticipate that like, it's probably not gonna remain juicy for like a really long time. This is probably like a two month kind of item. So keep that in mind. It's not gonna last as long as something like this where you're dunking the product into the lip stain all the time. When you're dealing with a marker kind of issue, one, put it downward, like store it like this. It'll keep all the, everything flowing to the bottom. But other than that, I could immediately see myself using that like tomorrow. Honestly, I could see myself using everything. I'm, I don't know, I'm really excited. Two shades of the NYX. Uh, I have the shade Going Viral. Um, I don't know if it actually went viral but we love the positive thinking NYX. That's that shade. I think that that could very easily be the shade that I use today. And I also have the shade In A Mood. That's a really pretty shade too. I'm really glad that I picked up that shade. It's a gorgeous kind of black cherry shade. So here we go, In A Mood, going viral. I think I'm gonna go ahead with uh, in a mood just because it goes with everything, but right away I'm excited to try going, or in a mood. I'm gonna go with going viral though. Is that what I just said? I don't know. Slightly sweet smell, I think. I can definitely say right away, I prefer this texture to like the ones from About Face. I think it looks nice. I mean, I don't really have any complaints about it. I think it looks good. All right, everyone. So that was a bunch of new affordable and slightly not affordable makeup that I also tried to include. Um, but I really couldn't be happier, honestly. I think that this look turned out well. I'm really, really excited by all of these new releases and that's a great feeling. That's a great feeling going into 2024, trying out a bunch of affordable makeup and being pretty impressed. So I'm excited. I will leave all the products that I tried out today with you guys down below. Oh, and by the way, let me know if you guys wanna see me do this with some more uh, luxury or more high-end makeup because uh, there's definitely some new uh, high-end releases um, coming out as well. So again, thank you guys so much for being here and I will see you in my next one.